I don't know why bikes are in my veins. I really don't. It's the form and the function and, and, and I guess the thrill riding them, but also the layout of them and, and the noise and the accessibility, I guess, of motorcycles. I got involved in motorcycling from about nine years old. Uh, my brothers all had motorcycles uh, and then I was given a moped. I sold that one and with the money I bought a, 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 an FS1E which I rode around the fields and spent my entire time repairing because it was knackered. Uh, and then as I got older I started to modify them and I learned to rebuild the motors when they went wrong. School. Uh, it was out of the door as soon as I could, cycled home and then back on the bikes in the shed and then you know summertime obviously we were out riding in the evenings. Well the land we rode on we weren't really meant to ride on, it was a, a vast nature reserve down uh, all shingle tracks running along next to the next to the beach. So yeah we were kind of a little bit disliked by the community for what we were doing but we didn't hurt anybody and we stayed away from the public. And the riding were both, the, the appeal, it, it, making stuff from nothing, because we never had any money, was always, you know, it's always kind of been the ethos of, of what I've always done, is repairing really difficult stuff in difficult circumstances, and uh, it's half the fun of it, challenge. Motorcycling never really became a career choice, particularly for me, it just was always something that was, I couldn't stay away from. It dragged me in, I couldn't really settle doing any other career. My background at Gerda Forks really started when I was working in the British motorcycle uh, auto jumble scene and doing repairs. The, the great friend of mine who I was involved with, he was building a vintage bike and he was searching for Gerda Forks for it because he learnt what they were and I was working alongside him. So I, I, I learnt the engineering side of it while he learnt the sort of the sales and, and the models and all that kind of stuff. And we've got a, quite a big dossier, we've got a big Bible, the Gerda Fork Bible we call it, which has got many photographs of bikes from all over the world. In, in the last five years, the States has really taken an interest in Gerda Forks as one, one major builder used to set on a real, real uh, high-end build. And it's really sparked a, a real interest in Gerda Forks again for, for custom builds. The aesthetics of them are amazing. Um, you know, you can do all sorts with them. You can carry on modifying them and put all sorts of peripheral adjusters on them and all that kind of stuff. So it gives a real scope for sort of to, to explore the front ends of motorcycles because with telescopics you can you can go so only so far with shrouding and, and various bits and bobs. But with a set of girders, you can it gives you a whole sort of another sort of 25% of the motorcycle to to, to customise. The custom stuff that we're starting to do now, we really pulled from from our, what we were doing, what we've been doing with the Gerda forks and and the, and the vintage frame stuff. We pulled the the aesthetics, and we really try to take the time to give it the same feel and you know the warmth and the depth that these these early stuff had. We we quite we quite often work with secondhand stuff, parts that we assemble, and I'll search the internet for for bits that I like the form or the function of, or we'll do the auto jumbles, and I'll pick up stuff that I think might go with go with the build that we're doing and we'll bring it back and we'll modify it and 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 just basically it's, it's about we really try to get the lines and you know to, to to gel and sometimes you do it and sometimes you'll come back and look at it again and we'll revisit it and uh, it's a nice to take your time over stuff and if you can afford to do that obviously my son's come into the business uh, in the last three years he's been a massive asset not only in helping out with the, you know, with the machining because he's learnt the lathe and the mill and, and welding, but he's also really, really come into his own as far as the builds we're doing. He's got his own build on the go at the moment, and he's also been helping me with the design and the build on the triumph we're doing. A huge amount of input from him, you know, for someone so young at 19 to be to be really looking that deep into motorcycles and 
not just motorcycles but aesthetics and design is incredible and also not being afraid to get the grinder out and get on with it. Building and riding bikes, I wouldn't even really say it was a lifestyle choice, it's just, it's just what I like, it's just what I do, you know. I, I've never really made any lifestyle choices, I don't think. And yeah, it's just, just, just who I am. There's more to life than chasing money, motorcycles, whatever it is. Yeah, you don't get long, so yeah, make the most of it.